So action shots using the shutter. As a summary, what controls exposure? We can control the light, so either put the subject out in the sun, turn off or on lights, add or remove use of the flash. There's various ways we can control the amount of light for exposure. We can also change the size of the aperture, which is the hole that lets in an amount of light. So a bigger hole is going to be more exposure, smaller, smaller hole is less exposure. We can also control the shutter. The shutter covers the hole, and it uncovers the hole for a period of time. If it goes longer, there's more light let, gets let in for a brighter exposure, and shorter is less light. And the shutter is what we're going to focus on in this video. The aperture has various settings. We'll just cover this really quickly. F1.4 is a smaller number, but that's the larger hole. So on the left is a larger hole, on the right is a smaller hole. F22 is a very tiny hole, less exposure there. We will talk about aperture and the meaning of those numbers in a different video. The shutter is measured in seconds. On the left we have one second, and on the far right we have one 120th of a second, very short period of time. So on these two scales, we're getting in less light, because it's a smaller hole or a shorter period of time on the right and more light on the left. And we'll talk about this also in a later video. If you have a setting on your camera of f5.6 right in the middle and a shutter of 1 15th of a second and that's the correct exposure, if you move your aperture 1 to the right to an f8 which lets in less light you need to compensate for that to get the same exposure by moving the shutter one to the left. So a jump from one to the other is called one stop. For every stop you change aperture or shutter, you have to change the other, the same number of stops in the other direction. That's probably the key concept of manual photography and being able to make pictures do what you want them to do. So again, not to beat a dead horse here, but which is the most exposed picture? It's the one on the far right. It was most exposed because it had a shutter that was left open 15 seconds as opposed to 1.3 seconds on the left. So the most exposed picture on the right because of more time, and that one I would consider as overexposed, which means it got too much light. The underexposed picture, the one that got too little light, is on the far left and that is because it had the least amount of time for the shutter being open. Effects of the aperture and shutter. So quickly on the aperture, in addition to affecting exposure, so a larger aperture lets in more light, a smaller aperture lets in less light, the aperture has another effect on what happens in your picture, and that's on the depth of field. Again, this is discussed in another video, but if you compare these two pictures, the one on the left has a larger depth of field. More things are in focus from front to rear. And the one on the right, the background's blurry and the front is in focus. That's a smaller depth of field and that was controlled by the aperture. And just like with the aperture, the shutter does more than just affect the amount of exposure. If you have a fast shutter speed, you can stop action. So on the far right, we have one five hundredth of a second. That's a very small period of time that image is stopped. You can see each individual drip of water. That's a stopped action shot taken with a fast shutter speed. A slow shutter speed on the far left, so say one eighth of a second, one fifteenth of a second, those are considered slow shutter speeds. One second on the far left is very slow. That will blur action. Notice only the action is blurred, not the table. So the camera was held steady, probably on a tripod. The table's in focus, or the table, everything's in focus, but the table is not blurry. Anything that's moving is blurry. And if you can see the distance the pool ball traveled from here to here, the shutter was open for that whole period of time. And that is what made the blur. You captured the image everywhere the ball was. So a slow shutter speed will blur the action. That's one way to show action. 
So what type of action shot is this? This is a stopped action shot, fast shutter speed. This one is also stopped action, fast shutter speed. The shutter was not open for very long, so they did not move very far um, during the shutter being open. This is a blurred action shot. Shutter speed was relatively slow. Note again, though, that the background is in is is in uh, very clear, no blur. This one is also blurred action, slow shutter speed. Stopped action, fast shutter speed. This one is blurred action, but the action is really the movement of the camera. The camera was not held steady, so you can see everything in the picture is moving, even the background, even the people. This is undesirable, but it is blurred action, action of the camera. What about this one? This one has nothing to do with the shutter. This picture is just out of focus. And you can tell because it's a nice soft blur in all directions. Let's compare an out of focus picture to a blurred movement picture. Here, this is nice soft um, blurring. It's not desirable, but that's out of focus. This one, you can see there's direction to the blur. That is based off of movement. So, blur because of focus, blur because of movement. Very different effects. What about this one? It's tough to say. Sometimes stopping the action is not the best way to show action in a picture. This ball may be a stopped action shot. It may be going very fast, but we had a fast shutter speed and stopped the action or that ball could just be sitting there. In this picture, if we wanted to show the action, we really probably need to blur either the ball or pan, which we'll talk about next. This technique is called panning. Now, had we used a fast shutter speed and stopped action, just like with the pool ball, we wouldn't know if that car is parked or just, or, or going fast. So in this one, we pan, we move the camera along with the car going by. But we want a slow shutter speed so that we blur that background that's moving relative to the camera. If we had a fast shutter speed, it wouldn't blur because we're moving the camera. Fast shutter speed would stop that action and everything would be not blurred. So in this case, we move the camera relative to the car, either in another car alongside or just rotate from right to left or left to right as the car goes by and since the camera's not moving much relative to the car a slow sh shutter speed works and keeps that car from being blurred but since the background is moving quite a bit it blurs so this is panning slow shutter speed camera moving with the moving object so setting the shutter cameras we usually shoot with our point and shoot and, and most cameras are set on automatic or program which lets you do things like turn off the flash and various other modes like portrait or action they do all of the setting for you the camera sets the shutter and the aperture if you're on full manual mode that means you sh set the shutter and the aperture but if what you care about is controlling your depth of field only you might use aperture priority that's either an A or AV on a camera with this setting and that's where you set the aperture and the camera sets the shutter for correct exposure. Now if you take shutter priority, S or TV mode depending on your camera, that means you set the shutter and the camera sets the aperture based off of the metering. So you just set the shutter to get stopped or panning or blurred action and the camera determines the aperture setting that you need. So you can see on here, here's automatic, program, which is just like automatic but lets you set some things, shutter priority, this means you set the shutter, camera determines the aperture, aperture priority, you set the aperture, camera determines the shutter, or manual, and you set both, and sometimes you might want that. Really quickly, other settings, this is a nighttime shot, macro or close-up shot. Here is an action shot, and what it's doing is automatically setting a faster shutter speed for you. This is landscape, this is portrait, 
and I don't know, that's maybe if you're taking pictures of South Park characters, but I don't, I don't know what that one is. So in summary, we have exposure, and that is exposing the digital sensor to light. We can affect exposure by adding light, removing light, changing the speed of the shutter, or changing the, the size of the aperture. So again, the shutter does exposure. A slower shutter is brighter picture. A faster shutter is a uh, less bright picture. And also using this shutter, you can stop the action using a fast shutter speed. You can blur the action by using a slow shutter speed and keeping the camera steady. Or you can get a blurred background by using panning where you move the camera with the object you're taking a picture of, have a slow shutter speed, and it blurs the background.